there. Welcome to Make Your Day Count. I'm Lindsay Roberts, and very, 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 very glad you joined me on this Make Your Day Count, Make Your Day Count program. I can't even talk this morning. Yes, I can, in Jesus' name, on this Make Your Day Count program. I want to ask you a question, and depending how we put the emphasis on it, I want your answer to follow the emphasis. If somebody were to come up to you and say, what are you wearing? Doesn't that sound awesome? Or if someone were to come up to you and say, what are you wearing? Hmm, totally different. Same words, same statement, same punctuation. Totally different meaning. There's a book in the Bible, Ephesians chapter 6, and it talks about the armor of God. Now, if you were in battle, you wouldn't wear an armor to a picnic. Why did the Bible talk very clearly about put on the armor to a God, uh, uh, the armor of God because you're going to war, you're not going to a picnic. And yet, you wouldn't wear a bathing suit to war. It's inappropriate. The Bible is very clear that if we want to go out and be able to battle, now we'll talk spiritually here, the, the attacks of the devil from day to day to day, you have to be properly suited, properly dressed, in proper attire for the proper occasion. And I do believe too many times we go out and we haven't got a clue what to wear. I, I received an invitation about a year ago. Well, actually, it was before the whole COVID thing, and it was um, black tie. Okay, whose tie? And, and if it's black tie, what do I wear? And is it a short dress, a long dress? Is it, I, I don't know. And I've been to a lot of occasions where I look it up and I, I call my friend Ann Plotz and I say, now what does this mean? And she'll tell me and you get there, it's completely different. And somebody's opinion of black tie may mean a baseball cap. I mean, somebody else's opinion of black tie may mean wear a suit. And everything can be different based on your interpretation of particular words. What are you wearing versus what are you wearing? Based on the interpretation of those particular words will lead you to a completely different outcome, positive or negative. Put on the armor of God, Ephesians 6. I want to talk to you about what you're wearing today. And I want to talk to you about what the Bible says about what you're wearing. And then I want to talk to you about an incident that happened with what I thought was a police officer. And it turned out to be one of the funniest experiences I ever went through because I was in a mall and the man was a security guard for a fancy schmancy store that I didn't realize how fancy schmancy it was until I realized that they actually had an armed guard standing out there and I, <laughs> I turned around and left. But all of it has its appropriate place at, at its appropriate time for the appropriate occasion and are you dressed for battle? whether it's a spiritual battle, where, whether, it's a, whether it's going to your job, are you wearing, you know, if you work at, at certain hamburger places, I worked at a hamburger place when I was a kid, and there was a uniform. And if you work at somewhere else, you may not have a uniform. But are you dressed for the occasion? I want to talk about making sure that you are spiritually clothed properly for the occasion. Ephesians 6, we're going to be right back. And when we come back, I also want to talk to you about Expect a miracle. This is called a cry for miracles. 918-495-7777. 918-495-7777. Online, oralroberts.com. Are you crying? Or are you crying for a miracle? We're going to be right back. Righteous Savior, died for freedom, save. Gave his life and place of Jesus gave it all for love, poured his blood for my shame. Worthy is the Lord, worthy are you, Lord, and for you 
such a savior died for freedom's sake gave his life in place of mine worthy jesus following Lindsay's Instagram page? It's such a treat. You will love it. There's something new for you every day to lift your spirit. A devotional, a prayer, just the word you might need. Uplifting scriptures to help increase your faith. Read God's promises to get you through the day. And fun family pics. Everything to brighten your day and make it count. Just follow at Instagram.com slash Lindsay Roberts ORM. Miracles, 918-495-7777, 918-495-7777, online, oralroberts.com. Are you just crying or are you crying for a miracle? I believe the Bible teaches us that we have a Bible right to expect a miracle. And one of the ways we can expect a miracle is by putting on the armor of God. And if you look at Ephesians 6, and in my particular case, highlighted in yellow. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, tricks and strategies of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God. And then it says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities and rulers of darkness, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in high places. Therefore, take on the whole armor of God. Don't leave any pieces out that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Now, every day of my children's lives, when they were young children and living in my household, we put on the armor of God before we went outside, before we did anything. Yesterday, as I was going out of my house, today, as I was going out of my house, my husband prayed, and his prayer includes the armor of God, put on the helmet of salvation. And I'm doing this because since my children were ch children, they had to do it this way. The breastplate of righteousness, and we tied on our belt of truth, our gospel shoes, 
truths of peace, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and above all, taking on the shield of faith, for which we are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And then it goes on and it says, praying always with the Spirit and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all pres pre pre perseverance, I can't get it out, and supplication for all saints. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now let me explain something to you. We did it starting head to toe. Ephesians 6 says it this way. It says, stand therefore. And then it goes on and talks about the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of, uh, of the gospel of peace. We did it head to toe, but we were covered. These do it in a different order, but we're covered. You can put on your shoes first and your rain jacket later, but you're covered. But if you start to leave anything off, go in one shoe, no rain jacket, no umbrella. We've been in some really rainy weather lately here. And, and you can walk outside without an umbrella. You're more than welcome to, but you're going to get wet. <laughs> so if you put up the umbrella, the idea is to protect you from the elements. Ephesians 6, the idea is to protect you from the effects of the elements. So I went into this store and my girls were with me and we walked in and not realizing just how fancy it was, I believe we were in our, I, I'm going to guess, tennis shoes and blue jeans. <clears throat> and we walked in. <laughs> this, I'll never forget his face. This man came up to us dressed in a security uniform, full head to toe hat, everything included. <laughs> <laughs> he said, can I help you? I said, I don't know. Can you help me? Who are you? <laughs> Straight faced. He said, don't you recognize me? I said, no, who are you? And he said, I'm the fashion police. <laughs> I laughed and I laughed and I laughed and I laughed, but his uniform was intimidating. And that was the whole point. His uniform was intimidating. Now he was hilarious. He was one of the funniest characters I've ever run into in a long time. And he was so intimidating. And he, he must have known that we were, we were ready to turn around and walk out because we were a little bit uncomfortable. And he said, don't you recognize me? No, I don't. I'm the fashion police. And everything began to melt. But at that point, I recognized his uniform, his outward appearance, his outfit was very intimidating. When the devil looks at you, are you walking out in the rain without an umbrella or are you intimidating? Are you intimidated by the devil or are you intimidating the devil? You put on the armor of God and you start with the helmet of salvation, covered the breastplate of righteousness, covered the belt of truth, covered the gospel shoes of peace, for you are able to walk over the devil's roughest territory, quench the fiery darts of the devil, uh, quench the fiery darts of the wicked one with the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. What is that? covered. But what would happen if you changed your outfit? And instead of walking out with the armor of God, the helmet of salva salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the gospel shoes of peace, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, above all, taking on the shield of faith to quench those fiery darts of the wicked one and praying in the spirit with your seven piece armor so that you walk out and you are not intimidated, but you are intimidating just like the guy who called himself the fashion police. We were intimidated until he made us giggle. Instead, are you walking out and you are, instead of clothed in righteousness and with the armor of God, instead of going to battle with an armor, are you going to battle, uh, you know, with a bathing suit? Are you wearing an armor to a picnic? Have you got your fashion statement all wrong? Are you walking out clothed in fear and worry and torment? Are you wearing the baggage of last year? I don't mean the, the, the clothing of last year. I mean last year's baggage. Are you walking around with fear and worry and maybe the effects of a bad marriage or a bad, uh, a bad breakup or the effects of a, a bad financial decision or the effects of I don't know what it was? And you're wearing fear and worry and doubt and, and, and negative and can't, won't, didn't, shouldn't. Or are you wearing the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Anything and everything I have need of God is already provided. I carry the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I take on the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Every time I see that, my children remind me and I remind them not to go out of their household without saying that. But you know what? Sometimes 
The situations cause us to forget the Word of God and remember the circumstance, to forget the Word of God and remember fear, and to forget the Word of God and remember, oh my goodness, oh my gracious, oh I've got to go to that party, oh I've got to go to that gathering, oh I've got to go to work and I've got to be on a job with that person. And all of the sudden, your sevenfold armor has a few cracks in it. And the, the breastplate of righteousness and the gospel shoes of peace, you walked out with one shoe. I remember this. I remember as if it was yesterday, we had a precious lady that was working for us. If I, if I can get through this without chuckling, it'll be a miracle. I have to chuckle because it's hilarious. Um, I had this tendency to get dressed and run out the door at the last minute. And when you think of being properly dressed, I mean, you know, business casual these days, business casual after COVID-19 and Zoom calls, what's business casual? You wear a, a shirt and a tie up here and you're wearing your pajamas and slippers on the bottom. Business casual has taken a whole new twist. But at the time we were still working in a building with everybody in the building, I had a friend. A friend of mine come in and she was part of our television program, but she dealt, you know, if we had like um, special guests or if we had special people coming into the program that day or, or someone coming in to be in the audience and she was in charge of those, you know, kind of relationships with those special people. <laughs> she, you can get through this, Lindsay. And she, <laughs> she, she walked in and she was wearing a pair of shoes and she was walking like this. <laughs> I thought to myself, did she break a heel? And I said to her, did you break a heel? You're welcome to go home and change. She said, nope. She said, I came to work and I didn't even notice that I had two different shoes on. I said, one's, she said, one's black and one's brown, and I, or black and one's blue. And I said, well, that's easy. I have a real hard time myself, you know, looking at black and blue and honestly telling the difference. And, <laughs> I looked down, one was black and one was white. I said, okay, I can't see how you missed that one, but okay, in the dark, you might have been able to miss it. And she said, that, she said, that's not all. She said, did you notice one is flat and one's high heels? I said, I kind of noticed that. But my question is, why didn't you? I said, you got all the way out of your house to your car in the building and over here, and you didn't notice one was higher than the other? She said, nope, didn't notice until, <laughs> until this minute. I could hardly work. I could hardly look at her. I began to laugh so hard. I said, honey, you needed the fashion police at that moment. And it was hysterical. And you know, sometimes it's easy that if you wear really, really dark shoes, one's black, one's brown. Okay, sometimes if things look close, sometimes if situations look close, you may think it's God and you may not realize, whoops, that wasn't. You know, it's, it's, it's navy, 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 dark navy and, and like a midnight navy and black. Okay, I can see that. One was white, one was really, really like shiny patent leather black. One was just leather white and one was high heel and one was flat. I mean, after a fashion, you gotta recognize that something's not right. And I think about that and I laugh about it and I giggle about it, but, but you know, we do that in life. So many times in life we walk out with the helmet of salvation missing or, or we didn't put on the gospel shoes of peace or we didn't pick up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You know, we did everything else, but we didn't take on the shield of faith. And we don't recognize until we already get out of the house and one foot's higher than the other, one shoe is off and one shoe's white and one shoe's black and, and we're up and down and up and down, we're all over the map. And we didn't even catch the fact that it was to terribly uncomfortable and it really, really was bad. And you know what she said? I wasn't paying close enough attention. I can see that with one shoe white and one shoe black, but I sure couldn't figure out one flat and one high heel. But imagine being so discombobulated that she didn't notice. And sometimes we're so discombobulated with the cares of life that we don't realize that we're walking around one shoe on, one shoe off, one hat on, one hat off, one glove on, one glove off, no helmet of salvation, no breastplate of righteousness. We got the gospel shoes of peace, but whoops, we forgot the sword of the spirit. And for heaven's sake, we didn't take on the shield of faith that morning. And you wonder why you can't quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. Today, I want to encourage you to be your own fashion police, the kind that notices 
spiritual fashion police that notices, have I put on my helmet of salvation today? Have I put on my breastplate of righteousness? Have I put on the gospel shoes of peace? Have I taken on the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God by declaring the word of God before I walk out the door? Have I picked up the shield of faith that by faith, through faith, in faith, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength in both Old Testament and New Testament? The just shall live according to their faith, and faith comes by hearing the word. So have I picked up enough word and read enough word that I've encouraged myself in the Lord in faith? Or am I walking around with one shoe on and one shoe off, one tennis shoe, one high heel, and being so caught up in the stuff of life that I didn't even recognize? I had two different shoes on, two different heel lengths, two different colors, and what in the world am I doing today? Be your own fashion police today in the spirit. Make sure that before you walk out your house, the devil has an agenda to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He walks around as a roaring lion, seeking who forgot their helmet of salvation, so to speak, seeking whom he may devour. And today I want to encourage you, Get out Ephesians 6, and if you never are used to reading the Bible before you do anything else, I want to encourage you, just try one time. Start your day by reading Ephesians 6. See where it goes. Put on the helmet of salvation. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Take on the gospel shoes of peace, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Above all, taking on the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. Pray in the spirit. Pray a prayer saying, Father God, make sure today that I am clothed in your righteousness, my right relationship with you, so I can quench the fiery darts of the evil one. And Father God, you and I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I encourage you to do that, Ephesians 6. Check your outfit today. Become your own fashion police in the spirit and see what happens. Stay tuned. We're going to be right back.
The new May June issue of Make Your Day Count with Lindsay Roberts is online now, and it's loaded with encouragement from God's life-giving word. The feature article by Lindsay explains how the company you keep can either help you or keep you from receiving the abundant life Jesus came to give you. Also, Richard Roberts has great suggestions to coach you how to keep your peace in the midst of a crisis. There's so much more in this little magazine. Just go to oralroberts.com to read this free online issue of Make Your Day Count with Lindsay Roberts. Okay, don't forget to get your copy and get all the information about how to do that, 918-495-7777, A Cry for Miracles. Have you ever thought about how many times in the Bible someone cried out to God for a miracle and He miraculously, supernaturally answered their cry? A Cry for Miracles, 918-495-7777. Seven, seven. Go online, oralroberts.com. And when you go online to oralroberts.com, look at the resources there. I encourage you to do that. There's lots of material there, lots of free material there. There's a, the school and where you can get online and have Bible school, Bible information, Bible classes, ministering classes, classes such as the journey through the Bible, Genesis through Revelation, classes such as uh, Seed Faith Living and, and the Miracles of Jesus, where I read the healing ministry, I think it's called healing ministry, of Jesus, where I really believe we can get great information so that we can walk out properly dressed for the occasion, putting on the armor of God, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the gospel shoes of peace, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, taking on the shield of faith and above all, as we quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, we pray in the spirit, pray, pray, clothe yourself in prayer. You know, I always say to my kids, I plead the blood of Jesus over you. What does that mean? It means apply. Apply the Word of God, the blood of Jesus, the armor of God. Do that today and expect, expect, expect a miracle by the power and presence of God Himself. I believe in miracles. Why? Because I believe in God. That's why I believe in His Word and I expect a miracle. I pray for you to be healed in every area of your life. I'm serious, every area of your life according to God's Word and His will. I pray for you to be healed today as you expect a miracle in Jesus' name, amen. Let's make it count.